Hey folks, Phil Zito here, and in today's video, we are going to continue looking at supervisory devices. We are going to start looking at point extensions. So we're going to go here and we're going to take a look under our BACnet network, right? We see that we have a device right here. We have our server and we've mapped in some points. So it's right here that we are going to start looking at these things called point extensions. Now, what are point extensions? There are really three main point extensions depending on what you're using as far as your software. The first of which is the alarm point extension. All right, so with the alarm point extension, we have several different types. and. You know, these may not be called extensions. I like to use the term extensions, but not every software calls them extensions. The reason I like to use the term extensions is because it extends the functionality of the point. Uh, the point itself does not have on this software necessarily a alarm. Like if, if I click on it, we see it doesn't really have an alarm, okay? No, in some other software, uh, like if I were to open up GFX and we were to click on a physical point, they actually have the ability to have the alarm in the point. But for this, I use an extension. So what I would do is I would use something like this out of range extension, right? And so this gives me an out of range alarm extension. Now there's typically three types of alarms. You have um, numeric alarms or basically number value alarms, analog alarms. You have Boolean alarms. These are basically true, false status alarms. And then you have enumerated alarms, which are based on states. So if you're doing any sort of state logic, maybe you're looking at multiple conditions and then determining that based on these conditions, you're in a specific state. And if you go in that state, you're going to have an alarm. Uh, so those are where you can use enumerated alarms. Now, I mean, it's a little different for everybody's software, yeah, but the fact of the matter remains that extensions are going to exist in almost every software. They might be called something different. And there's a couple different types, alarms, histories, sometimes totalizations. But we're gonna look at alarms and histories. So the alarm, right? I go in here, a couple things I can see, right? Alarm enable, is it turned on? So we wanna know that, is the alarm turned on? And then we wanna have our thresholds for the alarm. So if I go to my fault algorithm down here, right? I could say this is zone temp and I'm gonna set up a high of 78 and I'm gonna set up a low of 65. And if I want to, I could have a dead band. Uh, I'm not gonna put that in there. I'm just gonna say if it goes above 78 or if it goes below 65, I get my fault, my alarm, right? And there's on some of these, there's gonna be fault and then there's gonna be off normal. So off normal is gonna be like, hey, you're way out of range, whereas fault is actually alarm. That's how I like to set them up. And so then I could say, you know, uh, zone temp, is in alarm. I'm not going to use any wild cards in here. Um, with this software, you would use um, some different wild cards in order to, and it's called B format that you would use in order to basically call any uh, objects that are in the system. But we're not going to do that because I don't want to confuse anyone. So I'd say zone is in high alarm. And then, you know, down here, I'd say zone temp is in low alarm. And then if I actually go into an alarm condition, it would then display that. So that is alarms. And then when you have alarms, you'll have an alarm dashboard that then can show, hey, these alarms are occurring. What I can also do, right, is I can go for this and I can go to my history, which in other software is known as trends. But I can go to my history, I can go to my extensions, and I can go to either an interval or a change of value. Interval is time-based. Change of value is when the value changes by a certain amount. So I can go here and I can set up a numeric interval trend, right? And I can go and set this up. I can say, is it enabled? Yes, it's enabled. When does it run? I can set uh, history, right? I can set up how the history actually works. Do I have a capacity by record count? 
What's my policy when my record count is exceeded? Do I just roll over or do I stop logging? What's my time interval, right? How often am I going and trending these? And I can set up a, a whole slew of things, right? So if I wanted to, I could go and say every 30 seconds I'm trending this. And I, I could set all that up and there you go. Once this is all set up and you know I'm gonna set this up right now, um, I'm gonna do something, yeah, I'll do like 10 seconds. That way while I talk, it's gonna start trending. And so it's gonna start taking time samples from this. So right, we've we've got our temperature point, and our temperature point now has two extensions. One is an alarm, and one is a history or trend extension. Now what that's gonna allow me to do is I'm gonna have this kind of history chart, and you can see my zone temp staying pretty steady across the board. I like to keep my office pretty cool. So you can see it's 68 degrees, sitting pretty steady at 68.42 degrees because I like to keep the place that I work pretty cold. Um, and we can see that the actual trend log right here, the live history chart, <clears throat> we can see kind of how it's fluctuating right here. And this is what you would do, right? So you would use an alarm and that alarm would tell you if something's out of whack and that would go and enable you to do some reactive maintenance. And then you would use this trend to kind of see how things are performing over time. Like if you really wanted to understand, all right, what is the zone? How has the zone performed over the past couple days? Well, you would be able to use this trend or this history in order to see that. That's why it's so important that when you set up trends and histories, you really understand what you're controlling. So for example, for change of value or for uh, discharge air pressure, I would probably use a change of value um, and not a time period trend because here's the thing, zone temp, I mean, as you can see, the swings in the zone temp are very minor. And with most spaces being, you know, four air changes an hour, you're gonna go and see very minor swings in space temp, except for like when a bunch of people enter the space or when morning warm up or cool down starts off. Other than that, the space temp is not gonna change a whole lot, but pressure is gonna change quite rapidly. So you would rather than using an interval, you would wanna use something like change of value. And with alarms, alarms, it's just about getting your threshold right. The really big thing with alarms, really big thing, is tying it to occupancy. So, you know, if we go and I go to points and I go to views and I go to wire sheet and I'm going to add the point for the point extension, that way I can go and enable the alarm or disable the alarm. I keep doing that. I keep clicking on it and not clicking. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna do that and I've got my alarm inhibit. So then I would add a Boolean writable and my alarm inhibit would write to that Boolean writable. And I could set this to true and that would inhibit the alarm. That would keep the alarm from triggering. So that is how I could disable the alarm when I don't have the space occupied. So there you have it. This is an overview of alarms, of histories, and how point extensions are set up. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. Thanks a ton, and take care.